Okay, so doing a maintenance at this particular site today, I'm, I'm here pretty frequently. Um, while just doing my general visual inspections of, you know, faults, boards, trips, all that kind of stuff. Um, this one, it was displaying a fault. Um, it was a, I've now forgotten what it was. It was displaying number four, so high pressure alarm or high suction temp alarm. Um, but I was also given another call for that unit over there. If I can, uh, yesterday that does basically like a, a factory area. Um, and they said that it went up high in temp to about 27 degrees. So yesterday it was about 32 degrees. It was pretty hot. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll start with this one, jump into that one, see what we can find. So we can see here, uh, it was flashing. Well, originally it was flashing F, um, but with the temper zones, you can cycle power. And when you turn it back on, it will display the fault that, uh, or the most recent fault um, for a certain amount of time or whatnot. So did that and it was displaying a four, which is a yeah high pressure alarm or high suction temp. So what I'm gonna do first before, I, I've had this off now for maybe 20 minutes, um, just cause I want everything to stabilize. Cause the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test that um, thermistor, cause I know that uh, the misters are usually pretty common issue uh, on most units, but yeah, on these temp zones, on this particular side, I've replaced a, a handful of them, um, especially discharged thermistors. But um, yeah, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test that suction temp thermistor. Um, it's not too hot yet. It's only, you know, 24 odd degrees, um, but it is supposed to reach 32 today and it was 32 yesterday. So yeah, all right, first thing we'll test that thermistor. So our reading on uh, suction for Mr. One is 10.68 K ohms. Uh, I'll put up a little screenshot now, but yeah, that's uh, basically the temp is, you know, 24 degrees. So that's pretty much sitting within that, within that range, but we'll test the second one. And our second resistor is reading basically 10 K ohms as well. So yeah, look, both of those checking out all right. I might uh, just quickly go through and test these other two here. So both those discharge the misters are reading 49 km. So happy with that. Like I said, I'm on this site pretty frequently. So the filters very clean. So bell still attached, spins freely. Before I go any further, I'm going to put this thing, uh, I'll turn power back on and put this thing into a test mode just to uh, make sure that, you know, both my condenser fans start, both compressors start. We'll see how we go. To get these units to go into test mode, you've just got to hold that button in there that says test for three seconds. So, so now basically it's going through and just going to start turning on things for five seconds each. There's our indoor fan motor. But really what I'm concerned about are these two condenser fan motors. I want to see them run. Compressor one's on, compressor two's on. So we should have our fan motors kicking on soon. Fan motor number one works. Wait for that to turn off. And fan motor number two works too. So we're out of test mode now. Um, stage one is running. Um, I'm gonna get some probes onto this thing and we're gonna have a look at some pressures. So have our probes on and we'll test their voltage coming back from the board. Oh, sorry, from the transducers from the board. Testing across the HP1 switch there, across the green and the white, and we've got uh, 2.64 volts DC coming back, so we'll, we'll see if that's correct. So based off the calculation that TempoZone sent me, um, that transducer is reading correctly, so we'll get this second stage up and running and test that. Probes on system two. So across HP2, we're getting a reading of that and we'll make sure that that's correct, but it looks pretty good. So again, that transducer reading was pretty much bang on. Um, I think what we're gonna do now is let the system run for a while. We'll grab some lunch, come back and, and see what happens. So just inspecting the coil as well. It might not really come up on camera, but it's it's pretty clean, man. I mean, it's, I don't like particularly uh, like clean condenser coils um, on the reg, but yeah, I mean, really, like the air around here is not exactly crazy dirty. So, yeah, and stuff on a roof, usually the coils stay pretty clean. But yeah, like I said, yeah, that, that, that's pretty clean and that's not my issue. I 
We've come back from lunch um, and I let it run for an extra 15, 20 minutes. Still running good. Uh, you can see it's starting to heat up a bit now. Still not as hot as it's supposed to get, but pulling out a really good amount of heat. I uh, also have the benefit of I'm coming back here tomorrow. Uh, basically, this site's quite large, it takes a while to get through all the equipment, but at this point, I've, I've done a lot of checks. I'm very happy with how everything's sitting, pressures, um, how my uh, transducers and thermistors are all reading. I'm pretty happy. Um, for the time being, I'm going to uh, continue on um, hitting the other units and, and cleaning and, and whatnot, and I will monitor this for the next you know couple of hours while I'm still here, and tomorrow morning as well, we'll, we'll check in. All right, so this is our other package unit, the one where they said that the space temp was about 27 degrees yesterday. Um, I actually took a screenshot of it last night once the call came in, so I'll put that up now so you can have a look. But uh, I'll just ignore the <laughs> the crazy high ambient. It wasn't 42 and a half degrees. It was uh, it was only about 30, 34 or something like that. That sense is reading out. They know about it. It's fine. Um, <clears throat> basically, this one will be a lot easier to work on. These have the UC8 board, so I can basically go through and see what my pressures and temperatures are on this particular unit. Um, I have a feeling I already know what the issue on this one is, um, but we'll go through anyway just to double check. So again, I think I've said this before, you hit this little button here and it'll display uh, the readings that the unit's seeing on the little um, display there. So we'll go through. So SLP, 897 looks pretty good. So about temp, uh, seven degrees again, looks pretty good. Uh, suction line temp, 13. Superheat, six. Condensing pressure, it's pretty good. Condensing temp, 40 degrees. Yeah. It's all looking pretty good on the first stage. Uh, capacity on oh, 98. It's, it's yeah. It's basically running as 100%. Uh, EV1 open 70%. Also 70%. So look, I'm happy with how that's how that's reading. I'm going to go through and do the same on this one. Um, if anything stands out, I'll, I'll bring you back. Honestly, I reckon the issue with this one uh, is basically it's it's undersized for the space. So it, it's below me is a massive factory big concrete factory um, that just, yeah, this thing is only a 52 or 53 kilowatt um, unit and it's just not big enough. Um, it's running at 100% capacity. Everything, like all of my operating pressures and temperatures, they all look good, but I'll put a little thing up, but you can see that the, the space temp just constantly goes up the hotter that they get. So yeah, there's really not much more I can do about this one. So this is our duct here. Um, just you can kind of start to see the scale of the building below. It's um, obviously all concrete walls, insulation, and I can't really show you below, but the, there's quite a few machines in this factory as well. They're producing a fair amount of heat, so. Okay, it is the following day and we are back. Um, I basically I was monitoring this uh, this entire site is hooked up to a BMS system so I can remotely monitor um, the supply air temp the, the the cooling demand whether or not the compressors are running it's it is pretty cool uh, so I was monitoring this thing when I left yesterday and kind of overnight uh, and it was satisfying um, no issues uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pull the cover off anyway and see if there are any uh, faults present on the board but I, I doubt it um, what I'm thinking I might end up doing anyway is just pulling off these and just giving the coil a bit of a wash anyway. I just want to eliminate all possibilities. No faults present on the board. Like I said, we'll pull these covers off and give this coil a wash. Just a quick follow up on this one as well. Um, so this is the unit that is undersized for the space. So the way that I was, uh, the, the reason I came to that conclusion was obviously yesterday we saw that it's basically running its heart out and just not able to maintain the temperature space. Now there's a real basic 
like heat load calculation that you can do, right? And when I say real basic, I mean like really basic. I, I really only use it for say if I'm sizing up a split for a living room, right? Basically the calculation is you do width by length of the room by 150 watts, right? Or you, you can vary it, but I always just use 150 because why not, right? Um, and so I'll, I'll put the calculation up now, but basically I've done this before. This particular space is uh, 20 meters by 32 meters. And then I just did that by 150, right? So just to get a real, real basic, right? So this doesn't take into account the fact that this roof space is bigger than your standard 2.4 living room, right? Or the fact that it's all concrete or that there's a whole bunch of machinery down there um, that add extra heat load, right? So I'm not taking this as gospel. I just wanted to see what that calculation would give me. And as we can see, the calculation gives you 96 kilowatts, right? So that unit uh, is only 54 kilowatts. That's kind of how I came to the conclusion. Now, going forward, obviously, if we were to say, recommend that they need to put another unit, which I have before in the past, you give that to engineers and they can give you data back. They, they obviously have way more uh, complicated forms that they can put in. They give you... Um, yeah, a more accurate number, but just so you can understand why um, I came to the conclusion that this unit is undersized. All right, we'll get this coal cleaned. Don't know why I thought I could do that with one hand. <laughs> Luckily for me, there's a hose point with 60 meters worth of hose already on the roof, so. Don't need to worry about that. So I'm not going to go too crazy. I don't really have the time to kind of go through and do a full wash on this thing. So just take the side covers off. I'll just leave those ones on. They're a bit hard to get off. So um, yeah, just give the quick coil a uh, sorry, give the coil a quick wash. Basically, it looks exactly the same. Like I said, wasn't uh, that dirty at all. Um, barely even any surface dust, to be honest. So, either way, we've crossed that off the list now. We'll uh, start this thing back up and make sure it still runs. Okay, compressor one started now. Um, so, I'm gonna pack this hose up while I let this sit, wait for stage two to kick on. And yeah, we'll. Uh, I think we'll. We'll leave it at that unless something else happens. Like I said, this particular site, I'm here pretty frequently anyway. Um, so I'll be able to monitor this. I'm, there's a few units here, um, a couple of them that I do monthlies on because they're, they're critical areas, need them to be air conditioned all the time. So I'll keep an eye on this one while I'm here. And yeah, if it falls out again, you'll know.